Good Sunday morning time is 8 a.m. as we take a live look outside over Spear and Logan. You see some of those clouds up there. That's what we're focusing on this afternoon as some of that monsoon moisture makes its way into Colorado. Thanks for spending part of your weekend with us. I'm Mark Salinger and Usha has the day off. Want to get right over to 9 News Weather Impact Team Meteorologist Chris Spears because Chris, that monsoon moisture bringing in some rain and some possible storms. Uh, yes, and a slight relief in the temperature department. So we will take that. Uh, have the radar dialed up for you here. It's quiet over Colorado right now, but off to the southwest, you can see signs of that monsoon plume headed this way. If you friends or family in Phoenix. It's a pretty rare wet morning there uh, with quite a bit of rain in the area. There's some of that cloud cover Mark was talking about. This will shave a few degrees off our high for today as compared to yesterday uh, with the upper 90s on Saturday. I think just about 93 or so today with a 30% chance for a few afternoon storms. Here's that future cast. Now by far most of the storm activity will definitely be in the higher elevations and on the western slope, but a little of that will drift off the foothills and into the urban corridor. Coming up in our main weather, we're going to talk a little more about this monsoon return, the chance for some afternoon storms in the week ahead, continued hot weather, and of course, today's Broncos game forecast. That's all coming up. Chris, thank you. New overnight, Denver police are investigating a shooting downtown that sent one person to the hospital. It happened on 17th and Blake in Lodo. Right now, we don't know the extent of those injuries or who police are looking for as far as suspects. This is the latest shooting coming on the heels of two other shootings in that same area since the beginning of August. Last week, Denver police arrested a 16 year old in connection to a shooting near, near the 16th Street Mall that happened during rush hour on Tuesday. A driver caught the moments when about a dozen shots were fired in Lodo. Three people were shot in that case, two of them bystanders, but all survived. Downtown Denver Partnership says situations like this make them reflect on how to keep everyone safe. That's the top initiative for everybody right now. And on August 3rd, a man was shot on 19th Street after pointing a gun at officers. Police recently released this body camera footage of the incident. The man was facing three officers while holding the gun. One of the officers fired a single round that hit the man in the arm. During that incident, even more gunfire erupts just a block away in a separate shooting. Police Chief Ron Thomas called it an example of the challenge that officers are facing dealing with armed people in downtown Denver right now. Now, these three shootings in very public places downtown come at a time when the mayor and the police chief are trying to put an emphasis on safety and revamping the Lodo area. DPD recently closed several blocks of Lodo on weekend evenings to rideshare drivers to try and stop people from congregating outside bars and getting in fights. They also added more officers in that area. Across town, construction on the 16th Street Mall is trying to revitalize that area after it struggled to bounce back from the pandemic. With at least three shootings in the area in the past three weeks, it's clear there's still a lot more work to do. It has been two and a half years since the murder of Timothy Chavez, and still no arrests have been made. But this morning, his family is waking up to a new way to honor him and remember him. Now News reporter Brianna Clark joins us live in the newsroom. Brianna, the family held a ceremony this weekend to unveil a new headstone for him. Yeah, his mother has been saving up for it since his death. Before now, the family was visiting a half-broken makeshift memorial. And this is what that new headstone looks like. You can see it even has a photo of Timothy Chavez. He was found dead at his home in Littleton back in January of 2022. Police say he was shot six times. Timothy's mother, his five children, and other family members got together this weekend to see the new headstone and release balloons in his honor. So I'm hoping that this will help them at least be able to have somewhere to come and see his picture and say prayers with him and talk to him, tell him what's going on in their lives because he's missing out on so much. We spoke to some of his kids yesterday. One tells us she hasn't smiled since her dad's death. Denver police says that they are still investigating the murder again two and a half years later and are asking anyone with information to come forward. Timothy's mother says she has little hope that will happen, but she is still wishing for justice. Live in the newsroom, Brianna Clark, 9 News. All right, Brianna, thank you. Right now, police are hoping that you can help find a missing 80-year-old man out of Denver. Ruben Estrada has been missing since Thursday. He was last seen at his home near West 35th and North Grove Street. He frequents Rocky Mountain Lake Park near I-70. Estrada's car was located by the, at the park by family members yesterday, but they didn't find him. 
He's five foot seven, brown hair, brown eyes, known to wear flannel shirts and jeans. Anyone with information about where he might be is asked to call Denver police. Looking ahead to tomorrow, Denver City Council will vote on whether to put a sales tax increase for affordable housing on the November ballot. Mayor Mike Johnston hopes to convince council members to pass it through, though how much support he might have right now is a little bit unclear. The sales tax would add five cents to every $10 spent. The mayor says it would bring in $100 million a year for a city that's already short more than 40,000 affordable housing units. Some council members say they don't have enough specifics on how the money will be spent. This is not ready to go to the voters, especially not without some sort of guardrails around it. And we do not have a plan to be clear on what the money is going to be spent on. So it makes me wonder if we really know what we're doing by applying this money in the way that, well, we don't even know yet where it will be applied. So this passed out of council eight to five this past Monday with two of those voting in favor saying, I don't know if I'm going to do it again next week. So it's still kind of unclear how that will go tomorrow with the vote. If it does pass, this proposal will appear on the November ballot for voters to decide in just a couple of months. In just a few weeks here in Colorado, I should say in just about a week, Colorado lawmakers are set to meet at the state capitol for a special session to deal with growing property taxes. This will be the second special session in less than a year to try and lower property tax increases. Two Republican-backed ballot issues promise to reduce those tax increases at the expense of local government funding and the state budget. So Democrats feared that that would pass, so they cut a deal with Republicans, make those ballot issues go away, and in exchange, will give you some additional relief for caps on future property tax increases. Hundreds of thousands of people signed a piece of paper saying we what we need, we want you know more property tax cuts. And so, okay, I get that. Let's find a way to do it. I would say the citizens initiative process is a good check on the legislature, on the governor. And I think, you know, I'm glad that it's being used more and more given uh, that I think the legislature is out of step on a lot of issues with the people. The special session is set to start next Monday, August 26th, about a week away. It is crunch time in Chicago, where the Democratic National Convention kicks off tomorrow. Dems will rally, of course, behind Vice President Kamala Harris and her running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, as they formally accept the party's presidential nomination to be the top of the ticket for the Democrats. Big names, of course, plan to be there, like President Biden, former President Barack Obama, and Bill and Hillary Clinton. They all have prominent speaking roles headlining the different nights of the DNC week in Chicago. So Nine News will bring you live coverage Coverage from the DNC from Chicago this year. Our coverage starts on Monday night. Our very own Kyle Clark will be at the convention through Thursday, bringing you exclusive coverage on how the decisions made there impact us back home here in Colorado. You can see all that coverage here on Nine News and Nine News Plus starting on next tomorrow. While many, of course, will be focused on the Democratic ticket this week, former President Donald Trump will be hitting several battleground states as well as his campaign continues. A source says that Trump will be hosting a series of what his campaign is calling messaging events. Trump will be in Pennsylvania starting on Monday.